Hello, everyone. My name is Jasmine Park, and I am a policy fellow for the Future of Privacy Forum, and welcome to our module on teaching privacy to your students. Through this module, you'll understand the need to teach students about privacy, recognize the myriad privacy risks that students face online, go over some privacy tips for students and key topics to cover in your lessons, and discover useful lesson plans, activities, and other resources to adapt for your classroom. So you may be asking, why teach about privacy at all? And why should we be teaching kids? Shouldn't parents and teachers be responsible for student privacy? Well, as students are finding more and more of their lives mediated through technology and online, now is a great opportunity to teach your students about digital hygiene, safety, and privacy. Just as we teach our students how to be safe and protect themselves in the physical environment, we should be empowering students to be aware and in control of their information and activities in the online environment as well. So students should be aware of both the risks and opportunities they will encounter online and teachers should help students understand and navigate the online environment, help students shape their opinions on acceptable and unacceptable use of their personal information and empower students to take control of their privacy. What are some privacy risks students face online? Well, have you heard the phrase, the internet is forever? When a student posts something on their social media, it will exist on the internet forever, even if they delete it. We don't want a silly post made in middle school to follow a student for the rest of their lives, do we? Students are also prime targets for hacking and identity theft because of their clean credit histories. Make sure your students are aware of the potential far-reaching and extremely damaging consequences that may arise from their social security numbers being compromised. Finally, the shift to distance learning has left students more exposed. With online learning, students can inadvertently reveal details about their lives that they would not have felt comfortable sharing in the traditional school setting. Check in with your students to see if they are concerned or uncomfortable using certain tools and tell them to be mindful of what others can see during online classes. Encourage them to speak up if they ever feel uncomfortable and act to address their concerns. As you begin teaching your students about privacy, here are some guiding questions to get them thinking. What is privacy? Who needs privacy and why? Who should be allowed to collect, access, use, and retain their personal information? Under what circumstances, if any, should someone be allowed to access our personal information without our consent? If we share our own personal information with another person, government, company, or school, what should they be allowed to do with it? Here are some key topics to cover as you begin teaching your students about privacy. First, the types of personally identifiable information, online terms of service and privacy policies, targeted advertising, geolocation tracking, and surveillance. We've also included some examples of lesson plans, activities, and other resources to better familiarize yourself with these topics. Now, let's go over some privacy tips to impart to your students. These are adapted from the National Cybersecurity Alliance's Privacy Tips for Teens. First, what you post can last a lifetime. Before posting online, think about what others might learn about you and who might see it in the future. Second, be aware of what's being shared. Be aware that when you post a picture or video online, you may also be sharing information about others or personal details about yourself, like where you live, go to school, or hang out. Third, post only about others as you would like to have them post about you. The golden rule applies online as well. Be sure to ask permission before you tag a friend in a photo. Next, own your online presence. It's okay to limit who can see your personal information and what you share. Learn about and use privacy and security settings on your favorite online games, apps, and platforms. And know what's being collected, who is collecting it, and how it will be used. Here are some more privacy tips from our website, Student Privacy Compass. Be sure to use privacy settings. Choose how your data is collected or shared by customizing your settings. If a website, social media site, or app does not give you privacy setting options, you may want to consider not using that site or app if you want to protect your information. Next, delete your data if you are no longer using a site or app. 
If you want to browse securely, make sure that the URL at the top of your browser includes the text HTTPS rather than just HTTP. With HTTPS, the website secures the exchange of information on the site, so it's, it's safer when you share the information. Use privacy protective tools. Download and use browser plugins like Disconnect or Adblock Plus that limits unwanted tracking and advertisements. Finally, go incognito. Most browsers allow you to use a private window, which means that your browser will not keep data about your browser history or cookies. This makes it more difficult for websites to track you and your information. We're almost at the end. Now that we understand the risks and some mitigation strategies, let's take a moment to translate what you've learned into an actionable plan. First, consider the student privacy risks in the traditional school setting. In what ways could student information be compromised or exploited? Did students use any online services with questionable privacy policies? Next, consider the student privacy risks with online learning. How do they compare with the risks in the traditional school buildings? Which risks are lessened and which risks are exacerbated? Think of some strategies that you as an educator can employ to mitigate the risks you identified. Can you think of some strategies your students can implement? Now, create an action plan to teach your students the privacy risk mitigation strategies you identified. Will you integrate customizing privacy settings the next time students use an ed tech tool? Will you use an activity illustrating the longevity of information shared online? Be sure to write your ideas down. Finally, here are some useful resources to refer to with great lesson plans and activities. Thank you for joining us for this module.